So in this week's practical, we're going to look at correlations and a simple linear regression. So we'll start off with correlations first. We'll move on to a linear regression with just two variables. And then next week, we're going to cover multiple regressions, where you've got more than one predictor variable. So today, we'll just go over the basics of interpreting a simple linear regression in SPSS. But we'll start off with some correlations. So I've got some data here. So some researchers were interested in whether the amount someone gets paid and also the amount of holidays they take from work, whether these two variables are related to their productivity while at work. So we've got annual salary here, uh, number of days holiday taken here, and the productivity rating out of 10 here. So we'll start off by just bringing up some scatter plots to have a look at the data. So we can go into graphs and chart builder again from last week. Click on OK. And then when the chart builder comes up, this time we're going to go down to this here, which is scatter or dot. So this will bring up scatter plots. I'll start with a simple scatter plot and then we'll go into a matrix scatter plot. So if you click on the first box here, drag this up into the gallery. And then say we wanted to look at the relationship just between pay and productivity. So what we'll do is click on pay and then drag that down to the x-axis. Click on productivity and drag that onto the y-axis. And then you can click on OK. And this will bring your scatter plot up. So when you've got a scatter plot, it doesn't give you a line of best fix by default. And it's usually handy to add that to the scatter plot, because otherwise they're very difficult to really interpret. It just looks like a bit of a mess. So what you want to do is double click on the scatter plot. So this will bring up these boxes here. And then what you want to do is go up to this box here. And this will flash up as add fit line at total. So if you press on that, this will add a line of best fit to the scatter plot. If you wanted to get rid of this box here, just go over to the properties and click off this box. Click on apply, and then it'll just leave you then with a line of best fit for your scatter plot. So one thing you'll notice in this is that uh, these two variables actually had a correlation of around 0.3, so a medium-sized correlation. But the data is still quite fairly spread out from the line. So this is quite typical in psychology. When we're looking at whether variables are associated, then so many other things could influence these variables. So it's very rare that we get anything approaching perfect correlations. So this is quite normal. Just to illustrate with the scatter plot, the line of best fit will also indicate the strength of the correlation. So if you have a very flat line like this, it indicates very little correlation between the two variables. And then as the line either increases for positive correlation or decreases for negative correlation, this will indicate growing strength of the correlation. So this one would represent an almost perfect relationship between the two variables. Done a simple scatter plot there, and then for your practical, you're required to do a matrix scatter plot. So a matrix scatter plot will show you the relationships between all of the possible combinations of variables. So if you go back into graphs and chart builder, click on OK. This time, what we want is this box here. Just hover over it. It'll say scatter plot matrix. So if you click on that and drag that up into the box, and then for this, you can put all of the variables just in this box, and SPSS will do the rest. So you can drag those over, and then click on OK. And you can see that each of these boxes here now shows the relationship between this one for pay and productivity, this one for holidays and productivity, and this is it, this one for productivity and holidays. 
And again, if you double click on it, you can bring up the line of benefit. So if you click on that box again, then it will give you each line for each of the scatter plots. So for this example here, pay and holidays, you can see that the line here is very flat. So it indicates that the correlation between these two variables is probably quite low. For pay and productivity, there's a steeper line suggesting that the correlation is fairly substantial between these two variables. And the same for holidays and productivity here. So it's a good idea to just visually have a look at your data before you conduct correlation coefficients. Because as I discussed in week one, um, it's good to just see if there's anything strange going on in the data. And one thing that you do want to look for for correlations and regressions is whether your data looks non-linear. If you've got data which is highly non-linear, so an example would be if your data points were in a U-shape like this or in a V-shape like this, then one of the problems with that is it means that correlation and regression, which are based on the general linear model, essentially we're fitting a straight line to the data, whether you do a correlation or a linear regression. So if that data doesn't fit a straight line very well, then it's going to be problematic and you probably want to look for alternative non-linear techniques, which we won't cover on this module. But the majority of the time, the linear model is fine for most of these variables that you'll be using. We'll go back into SPSS now, and then what we'll do is conduct the Pearson's R correlation coefficient. So if you click on Analyze, and then go down to Correlate, and then we'll do bivariate correlations. So you can, there is an option here to do partial correlations if you wanted to as well. So partial correlations are looking is looking at the relationship between two variables, controlling for the effects of other variables. But we'll stick with bivariate. And then for the correlations, you can put all the variables into the same box. And then Pearson's R is selected by default, and two-tailed test is selected by default as well. And we'll stick with that. Click on OK, so then you get your correlation table up in SPSS. So just to run through how to interpret this then. So the first line in each box will be the Pearson's R correlation coefficient. The second line will be the p-value. The box, the line just below that box is the number of participants. So when you're reporting a correlation, if you wanted to report the degrees of freedom in a correlation, it's number of participants minus two. For this set of correlations, then, we can see that the relationship between pay and holidays, there's a very low correlation between those two, minus 0 0.04. Uh, between pay and productivity, there's a medium-sized correlation of 0 0.313. And between holidays and productivity, there's a medium going on large effect size of 0.435. And the relationship between pay and productivity, and also holidays and productivity, was significant. But the correlation between pay and holidays was not significant. 